2024 finds Dungeons and Dragons lover in kind of an odd situation. The D&D 5th edition is just about 10 years old. Hasbro, who now owns Wizards of the Coast, hemorrhaging money left and right. And recently, there's been mass layoffs from Wizards of the Coast, both in their Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering divisions. 2023 was a rough year for Wizards of the Coast. First, Hasbro jettisoned the old president and hired Cynthia Williams, someone who is most famous for having been in control of Xbox gaming for Microsoft. It further complicated the situation by completely trashing their fan base yet again and trying to remove the OGL. The OGL is a licensing agreement that allows for players to make compatible worlds with the D&D rule system. They wanted to get rid of the OGL so that anybody who makes their own adventure module or supplement to any version of Dungeons and Dragons, but especially the fifth edition, would have to pay a licensing fee. And in addition, not only would there be a licensing fee, but Wizards of the Coast would have to approve of what was in that module. For example, if you wrote a module where your character was, let's say, a barista, and someone at Wizards of the Coast felt that baristas were tools of colonial imperialism because coffee beans were farmed by serfs in third world countries or some such thing, well, they could tell you, no, no baristas for you. A particularly odious ruling, considering Wizards of the Coast has already purged a lot of classic content. People with maimed limbs, having dark gods and blood rituals, drug use. Where is Dungeons and Dragons going now? I think we need to consider their one success of 2023, which was the standout video game hit, Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were huge hits back in the day, but Baldur's Gate 2 came out in the year 2000. So it's been 23 years between Baldur's Gate's games. You might think that the video game makers would be a little rusty, but Wizards of the Coast partnered with the development company Larian, and they made what overall is a fantastic game. But it leads to some questions, and I believe points to the future of what they're trying to do with Dungeons and Dragons. In late January of 2024, there was a rumor that the Chinese mobile gaming company Tencent was going to buy Wizards of the Coast from Hasbro. Let's see if we can find evidences for why this would happen. First of all, we have a management shift within the Wizards of the Coast division prompted by the parent company Hasbro. That happened in late 2023. It seems as though they were actually trying to do this earlier, but COVID threw a monkey wrench in that process. What was the monkey wrench? Well, with everyone stuck at home, everyone was free to play Dungeons and Dragons all the time. It became a huge hit that combined with cultural phenomenons of things like Critical Role, Stranger Things, and D&D having a renaissance in pop culture, it made the brand more viable to keep for a while. This is especially considering that Hasbro's toy division has been circling the toilet for years, mostly due to a lack of toy tie-ins that kids want to play with. One thing that often happens before any company sells itself or a division off is mass layoffs. The reason for that is you have to provide guidance to companies that you're going to sell to. And that guidance is what are your expenses and what are your income and what is your projected income? The problem is probably that there was too much expenditures to income. So we see Wizards of the Coast cutting corners in areas like using AI instead of hiring real artists. And there have been cases of reported using of people's art off of the internet without any sort of pay or attribution. So now all of the pins are falling in place. We've got a CEO who has a lot of experience with online gaming. We have mass layoffs signaling a potential sell-off. Another thing that we haven't talked about is D&D Beyond. There has been a shift to virtual tabletop games in the last few years, the most popular being Roll20 and Foundry. So if you take these 
virtual tabletops. And you see what they're trying to do with D&D Beyond, which seems to be to add a virtual tabletop of their own. One tabletop to rule them all and in the darkness bind them, one could say. They've been selling adventures on Roll20 for quite a few years in Foundry as well. You can buy a lot of the official Wizard of the Coast D&D modules on there. However, I think that there's something more insidious going on. Cynthia Williams has stated that she wants to get money from all the players because the company has noted that usually it's only the DM who will buy a book, which means you have another somewhere between four to six players who aren't kicking in any money and they want to find a way to monetize them. It seems to me that if future versions of Dungeons and Dragons were all online, forcing you to play in a virtual tabletop, everyone would have to pay a subscription fee. You would probably have DMs still paying more for DM access, but other people would have to pay money in order to play and possibly pay money to get views of some of the source books. Or, oh, would you like to play a Minotaur? Well, you have to pay to buy whatever edition the Minotaur is, or perhaps a Minotaur is just an extra dollar a month. Whatever it is, it's a way to milk more money out of the system. By doing this, it makes it a lot more tempting for a company like Tencent which is already in the video game area, they're not so much in the pen and paper. Hasbro has denied being in talks with Tencent, and maybe Tencent isn't the target, but if you look at companies that are cash flush and could perhaps buy as significant a brand as the old TSR library with Dungeons & Dragons and the other tabletop role-playing games, and maybe Magic the Gathering as well, that would be video game companies. Most of them are still in the black. By pivoting and positioning Dungeons & Dragons in a digital format already, it makes it a lot more attractive to these companies because they already understand that space. Another thing that we haven't talked about is the use of AI. There are already people who will play single player campaigns with ChatGPT. The AI makes the campaign for them and they just go around and have fun. This is potentially a moneymaker for all the people who can't get in a campaign due to time restrictions or due to not being able to find a DM. It would be very easy for you to pay a subscription and you just play as you have time. So where does that leave us now? We're left with Wizards of the Coast probably being sold in the not too distant future because Hasbro is crying poor. It's probably going to go to some sort of a video game company or another company that really wants to take it into the digital world probably will ignore the traditional pen and paper. Everybody's sitting around a tabletop. There's a good chance in the next five years, the game will be unrecognizable to what people have traditionally played. And you? What can you do? Well, buy up books. There's still a lot of 5th edition books around. Download PDFs. There's all sorts of free rule sets out there. And while you're at it, why don't you try previous editions? 3.5 was so popular, Paizo ported it to make Pathfinder. There's still a large group of people who play D&D 1E. There's no reason that you have to update with the times or play a modern version. Play the version that you would like to play and that you think you can make friends and have fun playing. There's still a lot of old Gronards making modules for previous editions. And speaking of which, stay tuned for my announcement for Empire of the Undying Sun. That's my module for 5th edition. It's an overall horror theme campaign that starts with New England style. There's something in the woods. There's swashbuckling pirate adventures, travel to a desert civilization that has the characteristics of Mayans, ancient Egypts, and the Ottoman Empire. Journey through the deepest, darkest dungeons into ancient ruins where the party will make a choice that will change the fate of the world forever. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I will be back soon. We got D&D videos, comic book videos, interviews with people in the gaming, comic, and entertainment worlds. See you guys soon.